yes, uh, and really thank you so much for having me and, and really uh, brilliant words from the from the earlier um, speakers. Frugal is, is important for us to have um, an equitable access to healthcare. Because most of what we have today is usually important because of logistics, the cost of operations, and that's why it's not equitable. Because when the hospital has to put together all the costs that goes into delivering that service to that individual, it becomes more expensive um, than they would have, have had it if uh, um, if those if some of those materials were locally accessible. Now. Look at the situation earlier. You, you, um, there was a power cut, and and all of a sudden you were out of the, the network. That's the reason why we ensure that when we designed, when we're designing for the um, ventilators, we we focus on four key primary objectives to ensure that it is non-electric, because it's it's a sad story, but a lot of people have passed on in Nigeria and other African countries just because of the power cut. Doctors have had to, you know, administer, you know, critical um, care, you know, with a torchlight, you know, and, and the thought of all this and, and, and what that means for somebody in respiratory care, which is just that little grasp of, you know, hope they have to leave. And if that, if there is a power cut, most likely, you know, it will either deteriorate the, the condition they're in, or unfortunately they might pass on. Hence, the, 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 you know, a, a non-electric, uh, um, solution was key for us. Second one, access to oxygen, right? So a, a lot of uh, the situations that that, that, that follow in, in markets like Malawi, Nigeria doesn't really have so much of a oxygen supply uh, problem because there is enough supply from companies like Eliquid and uh, Bill and Melinda get from funded um, oxygen concentrators, but. When you look at other markets like Malawi, they are, of, they are usually cut off supply, and you know most of the cases, and even in India as well, you know, not just within the continent, but we're looking at that as a global space. But ability to build and supply and produce things locally is what um, is, is where we need to be. And when you look at a factor and you ask yourself, okay, what about the feasibility of being able to source materials? from within the continent, because almost it comes from out the continent, into the continent to source stuff, produce in Europe and send back to us. I think we, we are at a very, very defined moment and I'm not in a rush for it. I'm, I'm interested in seeing how this evolves by 2030, right? We, we need to take our time. We need to, we need to grow in a model that, that incorporates trust and togetherness and, and is sustainable in, in, in no longer into the future than just you know picking onto the next thing, which, which is which is fair enough because we're catching up. But the frogging is good, but a lot more needs to happen internally for Africans to work with Africans and you know get more done. And there's so much we can source from within our borders, and this creates you know pockets of vaults across the the the, the continent where you know um, you know market where you know, a particular material has been sourced, you can create jobs in just sourcing that material. There's a model that, that Japan usually adopts, which is um, uh, that each prefecture, right, each city has a product that it's producing. You know, we can do that at the state level in Africa, whereby, and there's just so much resource that these you know, markets do have. But what's really missing is the manufacturing capacity. Mm. Africa. So it wouldn't have the resource. It's another thing to mine for the resource. It's another thing to the receive, right? Then it's something else to now put all that resource together to make products that you can then get to the market. That value chain itself, you would find that even the same, you share the same supply chain with the manufacturer in, in with, with the supply with the supplier in Africa, a Chinese company can still source that material faster than yourself, process it and get it to to market faster than ourselves, and, 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 and that is the reality. We need to, as much that's, as we that's, to invest that's, significantly in data, a point where we need to invest so much more in manufacturing and local supply chain um, networks um, yeah. for, for a factor to be a success. 
Yes, yes, I, I can't agree with you in this space. That's one of the headaches. Um, so in our case, we, we are at a very interesting phase with our product. We've, we've, uh, after having gone through you know, three functionality tests in the UK, we, we, we're carrying out um, demonstrations in Nigeria and now about to kick off the uh, procedures. Um, just like the as rightly said, um, it takes about, uh, uh, it, there is a concession actually for, for COVID. They say it takes about two weeks to get an approval. But like, like you said, we actually in our own timeline, we have two months, you know, in that in, in, in that space, rather than just saying, well, the concession says two weeks and it's going to be two weeks. It's never going to be two weeks. We understand that. And uh, and, and those are some of the gaps um, in the system. And a lot of things can really happen if we just execute. If when we when we went to to uh, some of the uh, the ministries and and we engaged them, there is documentation, there is procedures, there's everything in place, but the tools to make those things happen do not exist and will not exist. Hence, it will flaw the whole process. I mean, detailed documentations as to how a clinical process uh, trial should be carried out, it's all there, but in terms of executing it, it doesn't happen. So it, it somewhat brings to the thought that okay, maybe this part of the procedure was funded itself was never the fund to get the work done. So, so, so there are gaps in our system. And that's why I was saying earlier that we should be patient. And, and um, you know, Dr. Parker was able to, to shed more light to that as to the four year time that's required for things to get harmonized. It's very, very important. You know, a case talking about data. Uh, given that we're dealing with respiratory care, one of the things we always measure is the um, uh, oxygen saturation of the patient, right? Uh, to ensure that, well, you know, is the, is the patient getting any better or should we, you know, change um, medical care uh, options or, you know, whatever we should do. And we, that, that data is the data of the patient. It's not our data. Right? So the core data is the data of the patient, but then we take a snapshot of that data to make room for, for doctors to share and learn. And say, well, I've had this patient and this is how the improvement is, how they're deteriorating. And you can actually see that graph, but it's not you know, um, useful beyond a pictorial uh, image, which the, uh, the patient has to, well, not, not really approve of because, um, it doesn't link back to them as a person. It's the, yeah. the, the raw data yeah. is their data, but it doesn't link back to them. But you could say, okay, well, I was dealing with patients A, B, C. It doesn't even need to yeah. mention the name. But for learning purposes, we have a cohesive environment whereby doctors across the markets could learn. Uh, we, we, we've had that in place, and it's, it's quite it's quite useful.